Hey guys, how are you doing? Brian here. Welcome to the new episode where I paint all those great big tanks. So in this episode, we're gonna paint something that is built and designed in the pre-era, in the early ages, which is not this one, of course, but this one. The all famous FT, Reynolds FT-17. I can't really comment too much about the build quality because it's top notch. It's just as good as their previous models. Everything is like to the scale and you can see all those crazy rivets, like the real one, uh, it's really cool. This is a really well detailed model. Uh, of course, you can open all the hatches like this. Uh, so this one, uh, the one I'm painting, is actually a, a prototype. It's not a pre-production or anything, it's just a prototype, which means it cannot run. It's not an operational model. But the production one, which I've seen already, uh, is uh, fully operational. Uh, this RC controlled and uh, you can move the turret and you have, of course, you can run it. And they are also a, a, a a camera inside of the driver's hatch, uh, which means you can see what the drivers see, if that makes sense. And you can control everything uh, via a, a mobile app, which is pretty cool. All right, um, so this one, as we can see, uh, the, the base primer is, is on already. And this is the exact primer that I used on the Kintaigo Panzer and T-34. The most important thing, well, the most apparent thing, as you can see, is that the, the size, well, I like the size very well, because, well, it's a one to six scale, which is really big scale for a scale model. And uh, the King Tiger is like, like that, gigantic, and it weighs like 200 kg or nearly 400 pounds. But this one, this little thing is like, uh, I don't know how much it weighs, but I can lift it, which is, which is really nice. Uh, speaking of hatches, actually, because I've mentioned, this is just a shell, uh, which means it has no motors and batteries and things like that yet. So we can actually lift it up and have a look at. If you install the motion kit or upgrade it to a fully operational one, and the, 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 I think this gun can do some recoil or can it? I don't know. Probably no, but probably no recoil because this is just a really tiny gun, but it can do the elevations for sure. Like, now it's not moving. Yeah, hope you understand. all these like dark panel lines or dark stripes that I created with the spray can. And this will be served as the base coat for further chipping steps. I mean, dark areas will provide you a more variety in terms of color. And this will make the top coatings a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more interesting. So now I'll apply a random layer of hairspray, which is inside of the airbrush already, to the whole tank uh, to create a chipping medium uh, between this base coat and top coatings. You know, the good thing about using, uh, for example, hairspray or any other chipping medium uh, to create chippings is that uh, you can achieve some uh, really realistic chipping result uh, very quickly. So, uh, I drilled some white lines on the base color uh, to serve as a guideline for the camouflage. So what I want to do is to paint a uh, World War One style, uh, you know, really colorful kind of camouflage, which I think uh, is the most appropriate uh, for a, a French little tank like this. Uh, so actually, this is a fairly complicated one because there are like six colors in total. Actually. Uh, these brown colors, these red brown colors are more dominant uh, than these gray and the bright blue. So you don't really want to have the exact same size of each color. Otherwise, you know, uh, the red will be too strong 
and uh, the sand color will be too weak. And these grid colors are really important for the whole setup because this will like neutralize some of those like shiny or uh, you know saturations. We'll just neutralize a bit and make it more natural looking, uh, make it more subtle, the whole thing, and harmony, you know, if that makes sense. All right, uh, so I have finally finished painting the majority of the camouflage, uh, excluding drawing the black lines around these patterns. I have to be like very, very cautious and I can't afford making any mistakes because I don't really want to paint the whole thing again. So. Right. It makes me nervous actually. And to be honest, this is one of my favorite camouflage uh, during the years, I mean, during all my like big tank projects. Now we're gonna paint the, the exhaust. And uh, the key of creating a, for example, a convincing rusty effect is like, you have to have uh, like a lot of layers of different colors, of different rusty colors, because you have old rust and you have some new ones. You have uh, those chipped areas and also you uh, don't wanna make it like too over exaggerated. You know, it's like it, it's been abandoned for long time, something like that. Okay, now let's look at the uh, lower part of the tank. Uh, I've done some dusty and muddy effects uh, on the suspension system. And actually now there are uh, at least three layer effects. The first one is these like streaking effects, uh, and which is done by oil colors. And after it's dried and I applied a layer of uh, a semi-gloss varnish uh, to protect the fact, then I've done some, you, you see all these splashing dots uh, all over the places. Uh, and finally, uh, I'll draw uh, some darker, for example, like uh, wet effects on some of the areas like here and maybe all these, like these areas. Okay, uh, now the final steps. Uh, probably the final step, uh, the, the tracks. So as you can see, the tracks details are really nice for sure, but I have to do uh, some weathering to make it, you know, uh, go well with the, uh, with the tank. And you can clearly see the difference uh, between these two, the new one and uh, the weather one. Now I can finally uh, put on the tracks. Uh, without the shoes, the tanks are, I mean, pretty ugly, but with the tracks on, it's a totally different story. It's a pretty hard job to do. I don't know if I can. Well, it's really painful to get the, the pin uh, into the right location, but yeah, we've done it. 
and finally the other half is on. I mean, it's not an easy job, uh, but look at it. Look at it right now. Really gorgeous, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, but I probably need to change another table. It's totally ruined. Yeah, let's get some decent photos for it. Hello guys, uh, it's Bayan here. It's been a long time since my last update. Uh, so a quick brief about um, what was happened. So this year must be tough for a lot of people. Uh, the same goes for me. So I was uh, basically, uh, I was diagnosed with uh, some cancer and I need to change my lifestyle quite a bit. Uh, so that's basically the main reason for my uh, long overdue of the videos. Uh, but hopefully uh, I can get back on track soon. And uh, I'm already started to planning the next major project. And hopefully I can start to shooting uh, that one uh, early next year. I'm really grateful uh, for your patience and understanding. Uh, especially for all those who were supporting me during this hard time on Patreon and uh, all the public pages. Uh, thank you for that. I uh, really appreciate that. And hopefully uh, we'll all have a better year uh, in 2021 and uh, stay safe. So I also have something as a gift to give away. The first three is uh, this really cool cutting mats. This one is the Panda one, and also have another Panda one, and also a Sherman one um, from Tank Raft. That's the the first one, and then I have two of this really nice uh, Rolls Royce armored car <laughs> kits from Roslug to give away as well. So all you need to do is just leave a comment in the comment section so I can. I'll draw the winner from from there so hopefully uh, you have a nice weekend and uh, I'll see you pretty soon I guess peace <laughs>